the Advanced Tech Podcast, providing a spotlight for innovators and disruptors. For links and show notes, and to find out how to sponsor the Advanced Tech Podcast, go to advancedtechmedia.org. You can also find and sponsor us on Patreon. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, please take a moment to subscribe and give us a rating. You can also sponsor us using Bitcoin at advancedtechmedia.org slash sponsor. Welcome to the Advanced Tech Podcast. We're going to be live just after HCCP number seven. So I'm here with Cypherpunk now, a graphic designer, and a long-time Cypherpunk creating art in Bitcoin and the Cypherpunk space. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I thought we were just going to like the background and how we got started. When we started, we didn't even know that uh, it can go like globally. But now it's parallel police open in in Vienna, in Austria, and uh, there were parallel police in Slovakia and uh, in each country. They call it in their own how to say uh, modification of parallel in the local language. So you check it's parallel. Ni. But in Spanish, it was uh, Polis Paralela. So we try to keep this local name, even it's a global name coming from Latin, from Parallel. And then how would you describe yourself? Bitcoin artist? Oh, well, yeah, I would say Bitcoin artist now, but uh, I'm doing this kind of uh, Bitcoin propaganda art like last uh, four years. And I didn't even know it uh, called crypto art when I started. I did it from just pure enthusiasm for Parallel Police, where I'm co-founder and I also am a member of Stohoven Group, which uh, make Parallel Police as one of uh, our projects. But back to this, so I, I didn't know it called crypto art. One year ago, I didn't even make it like publicly. I did it only for Parallel Police, and I didn't even know that there are more artists who are uh, interested in Bitcoin art or crypto art. And yeah, so for me, it was just the expression of what's happening in Parallel Police of the movement of cypherpunk. So, how did you get into this? Uh, well, it starts with art groups Tohoven, which uh, is doing some kind of uh, art in public space. We did our first uh, happening in 2002, and since that time we evolving, and we did some stuff like uh, we did atomic explosion in live broadcast of uh, Czech national TV. And we hack the parliament uh, discussion when we sending SMS uh, messages to all the members of parliament. So, and more actions. But we met uh, hackers in one point, uh, which we, which because we needed to get into some uh, like specific areas, like uh, the SMS uh, kind of spoofing in that time, or this even uh, this atomic explosion. We need some kind of tool to connect to the live broadcast. So we were. We were walking around hacking uh, for a long time, but no one of us is really uh, skilled in hacking or whatever. So we met some people in Slovakia and uh, we put it together. So you're one of the co-founders of Paralong Polis. Uh, how did that all happen? Yeah, that's uh, happened because of the art group Stohoven and uh, we know that in 2012 we did this uh, spoofing of parliament discussion and in that time we first time met the idea of bitcoin and for me it was just a token for gamers so i didn't pay attention in that time <laughs> but uh, we were in close connection with those hackers from slovakia and we talked about this uh, hacker space and uh, we started so we build up this parallel police. I mean, build up. We start this project. We open the Bitcoin coffee. It was Bitcoin only coffee. So many people just turn in the doors, but others were uh, interesting. And we made this Institute of Crypto Anarchy, which was some kind of think tank where we discuss uh, what we are actually living now after five years. So we, <laughs> we were talking about this. And yeah, that's uh, how we start Parallel Police. And I did the graphic design and logo and uh, all the like visual face of this project. And also I started with printing in that time. So I print some design I designed for Parallel Police in limited editions. So. And I remember you were printing, you brought your printing press to the, to the Converse, the Agus Converse. So you did the Cypherpunk features now. 
Um, I, I know that you custom fitted me a, a t-shirt, which I like because you mentioned it's a different shade of gray. I thought it was a blank background, so when <laughs> I turned it around and had the seventh edition, I was like, ah, oh, okay, but then you heard I'd be a print it over it, and it's, it's cool, it's very fun. Um, yeah, I love this kind of mashup. I'm printing on other t-shirts, like people bringing me t-shirts with the prints, and I'm going over the whatever they have on it. <laughs> That's the mission of, of this session. And the Cypherpunk Future is now became somehow my name in uh, in short shorter version like cypherpunk now but it's all coming from the poster where i visualized the cypherpunk manifesto from tc may and it was kind of my first images i did uh, at parallel police and printed and when you read this manifesto you are like uh, how he can write it like 20 years ago because he's writing about what exactly is happening now so that's inspired me for Cyberpunk Future is now and it became the name of my project. It's actually one of the posters I'm uh, reprinting because uh, many people want it and it's so basic and elementary information. Uh, yeah, this is one of the prints I'm reprinting and I'm not changing colors. I did some reprints but I always change the colors but this is this works only in black and red. It has the essence of uh, somehow the punk and uh, revolution and the revolting. So what's the process behind your art? Do you have a process or how does that all unfold? Oh well, I have the inspiration in the, in the cypherpunk core in Prague. It's inspiring, so I'm just sketching and then I'm and then I have some ideas, I'm working on computer on some collages and then I prepare it for uh, screen printing, which I manually print in, in large format, in editions like uh, maximum 40 prints. Design. What are some of the, the favorite pieces that you've created? Or your favorite pieces that you've created? Oh, well, uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to make my pieces all favorite, but <laughs> it's a difficult question. I, I'm spending a lot of time before it's, uh, it's printing on working on the graphics, so usually I recognize if I like it or not after some time, and if I don't like it, I just don't print it. If I have doubts, I'm not going to make it, so I like my design, so in meaning I know I did maximum for uh, make it perfect. So being an artist in this space, we're starting to see the emergence of more Bitcoin artists and more cyberpunk artists. What are some of the new things that you're seeing that, that really excite you? Yeah, I'm really excited about the NFT scene. This is something like completely new. I entered the NFT scene like one year ago when I just realized I'm not only one Bitcoin artist on the planet. <laughs> I was surprised, but since that time, this is like a huge scene. So many people doing uh, NFTs and there are some collectors who uh, spent a lot of money in NFT crypto art. So I, I, of course, I have some doubts about it because I'm kind of maxi, Bitcoin maxi, uh, in meaning that I understand why Bitcoin is uh, so pressure and valuable, but to compare it with, with Ethereum, it's, uh, I have problems with it because, of course, for me, it's just great to make art and sell it, and then I change uh, Ethereum for Bitcoin, but if I imagine that I am collector, I still don't believe that in 50 years uh, there will be any Ethereum. So maybe yes, but it seems that those collectors strongly believe it. But yes, this NFT scene is huge and it's changing art market because every art is the uh, royalties from secondary sales and it's such a global and uh, doesn't matter if you're from Prague or from LA or from any space on the planet. Well, we were talking earlier that NFTs aren't necessarily uh, married with Ethereum, so it could potentially be another chain like Bitcoin, but I think that's still somewhat of an unknown. Yeah, some people told me that it's uh, absolutely uh, sure that it's going to happen in one year. I hope so, but I have uh, doubts because uh, it would already happen if, if it would be easy. True. But still, the, the NFT concept is, is interesting. It's like a cryptographic watermark. Cryptographic watermark, yes. Yeah, it's definitely uh, confirm that you are owner of the NFT, which is uh, which is just great because you are owner of the JPEG. 
you know what I'm printing, the physical art, and this is for me just easy to understand that people collect it and uh, put it on the wall. But with NFT, it was from beginning for me just Wonderland. You are doing the JPEGs, and some people are collecting it, and they are proud to have it, and <laughs> they know everyone can copy, but they are not owners. Everyone can see it, but only one can own it. So, uh, so it's amazing. That's a good way of, of sharing your art while still retaining the, the benefit from it. There's an idea of like a, a collective digital commons, but um, I think for all the work that you put in, the artist should always be benefiting from that. It's, it's your original idea, so it's the way that you can retain that ownership, yet still propagate it without having to go into copyright territory and have tons of lawyers involved. Yeah. What else would you like to talk about? Well, I, I don't know. I, I'm not ready to question myself. <laughs> Well, I'm still pretty analog. Uh, this digital sphere is uh, new for me, and I started one year ago, and uh, I was very slow. I still was like, okay, but I would rather make it on Bitcoin, not Ethereum. So I still was waiting, and like recently, like one month ago, I decided, okay, I have no time to wait because I see how this uh, this movement is going to be big, and so I decide to put my printed artworks into NFT. And yes, I'm now I'm doing even the project just for NFT and trying to show it in CryptoVaxels, which is kind of a Minecraft for NFT scene, uh, kind of the meta space, if I call it right, uh, where the galleries are and the artists are showing their stuff and it's uh, quite exciting uh, another space. So uh, I had no time to wait for Bitcoin and I, I start to do it even on Ethereum because it's so so new and so fast. Yeah, this space definitely moves quickly. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, like I say, one year ago, it was uh, really like a small village, but now it's the huge city and what it's going to be in next year. So I'm just wondering. Yes, it's hard to predict. I mean, it would be interesting to see if NFTs can be stored on Bitcoin and how that might work. Yeah, this is uh, also like uh, something I, I absolutely even don't want to try to understand because uh, I'm artist. I did always my stuff first by the hand, a brush and pencil, and then uh, scan it and put it into computer where I edit it. But uh, like uh, from programming or coding side, I'm absolutely like zero. <laughs> I don't even try to understand. I understand the vibe and the emotion of the Bitcoin movement and I understand the memes and uh, the history, but uh, not coding. This is not uh, something I can comment. <laughs> I think it's really encouraging to see so many more art projects. You know, it's a good way for people to contribute, whether it's through writing or through art or through some other creative uh, media or medium. I think that there is definitely a story to tell for Bitcoin. And the people that are able to put a concept into pictures versus words, it's quite interesting. Yeah, I would say that, that the Bitcoin is now before hyper-Bitcoinization, it's still like kind of the last underground uh, on the planet. No one of us really knows what will happen, but we are putting a lot of energy in it and we still know that it will explode one day, but no one cares about us in this moment. It's, <laughs> it's going to be very different when, uh, even for artists, when uh, hyper-Bitcoinization came, so all the artworks which uh, were from the time before were, will be like uh, very uh, pressure, I think, because, uh, because it's kind of sidegeist of the, of the Bitcoin history. 100%. Uh, a sense of a groundswell building in uh, the scene. And anytime I see interesting art, usually it, it evokes has a strong message behind it. It's the unconstrained voices. So I think now that we're starting to see more art, it takes away that initial concept of it's just magical infinite life, which I think some people still think, even though we're starting to see you know, significant investment being put in it. It's really interesting. Exactly. This, this is like a confirmation on, of the Ethereum because. Actually, no one cares about Ethereum and those, those people care about the art. So, 
what I think is when it switch for Bitcoin, it will be 100 times bigger because uh, even much bigger collectors can trust it in that moment. Yeah, there's a concept of, I don't know how it's best described, Bitcoin is the TCP IP of money from that solid security layer so many other more interesting things grow. And if you try to put everything on that one layer and the protocol is, is blocked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm currently working on the physical version of Citadel 21, which is the Bitcoin Maxi magazine. And I'm really enjoying this uh, cooperation with Odlonaut and Katoshi, who are just uh, great people who don't tell me what I should do or shouldn't do. They let me absolutely free to express my graphic uh, style. So I did uh, already two issues and uh, I have to immediately start with another one. And also I'm working on my uh, NFT project, which I'm uh, releasing on Rarible, which is a platform, which is kind of jungle, where anyone can mint uh, their NFT, because I'm, I'm also on Super Rare and No Origin, where they have to like accept you as an artist to their crew. But this Rarible is jungle, completely jungle, and I like it, and I have the project which, which called Rare Bible, and uh, I'm doing kind of like, I draw over the illustration from Gustavo Dore's Bible, so I did kind of mesh up and uh, I'm slowly releasing Ferdin images which I connected to Bitcoin white paper, and every, every image is the picture for each uh, chapter of the Bitcoin white paper. So this is completely uh, confusing because I'm mixing uh, Ethereum NFT with Bitcoin white paper, but uh, you know what, that's what's happened now. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll motivate people that are working on Bitcoin that have an interest in NFTs to build it. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I, I, I hope they will be motivated if they see the amount of, uh, of new artworks and money which are in uh, Ethereum NFT. Have to be the motivation for them. What are some of the highlights over the last the last couple of years that you're particularly proud of working on? I will talk about slightly different thing. I will talk about how I entered the the art scene because, as I told you, I was working since 2014 on a project Parallel Polis, and I did all my graphics like uh, just from enthusiasm because uh, I had the possibility of printing and I have all those ideas to visualize. But last year I decided to quit my like graphic freelance work and uh, COVID helps me a lot with this on beginning of this year because I lost a lot of clients and when they came back after a few months I told them sorry I don't have a time because la last autumn I decided to quit this work and fully concentrate to Bitcoin only graphic and uh, printing my visuals. So I uh, went to, to Baltic Honey Badger where I first time uh, ever met this Bitcoin maximalists which uh, somehow infected me <laughs> and uh, not with COVID. <laughs> no, 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 it was stronger, much stronger than COVID. <laughs> and uh, since that time I'm uh, like uh, putting all my energy into this project. So my favorite moment one when I was when I uh, when I started this exhibition at Baltic Hennebecher because I did some art shows in Parallel Polis before, but uh, I wasn't even like personally there. I just put the uh, screen prints on the walls and then I enjoyed our Congress, HCCP. But at this Baltic Honey Badger, I s first time really saw the, uh, the reaction of people and that was a huge motivation for me to, uh, and that was the moment I really recognized that I should uh, not do the graphic design for other people, but uh, concentrate on my own. Interesting when you make the jump to, to work for yourself. It's a big leap of faith to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was a step to unknown, but I would say I'm much more happier since uh, I'm doing this, <laughs> like personally. Well, you have the grounding in the background to understand. You know the reading very well, so I think it's Yeah, it's kind of. This is another point. When we start Parallel Polis, uh, we did this Bitcoin only coffee. And uh, so we, are, we were still buying bitcoins and spending them all for the, for the coffee because no one of us in 2014 has the vision that uh, 
it can be for more than four hundred dollars, which were Bitcoin in that time. So we didn't, or me personally, I didn't uh, hodl anything from that time. And it took me another three years till 2017 when I recognized, but it was before the 20,000 all-time high. In that time, we still didn't even think it can be big or bigger. And we just uh, spent it for coffee and we live it. And now I'm selling some posters and on my eShop you can buy it for Bitcoin. But almost all of my clients or the people who buy my posters are paying with fiat because they don't even have Bitcoin or they don't want to spend it. And this is something I don't understand because I was I grew up with Bitcoin and I always earn it and spend it. I mean, I didn't earn it in that time. I just changed the fiat for Bitcoin and, and then pay it for coffee. So I'm a hodler, but uh, I still can spend Bitcoin. This is like, uh, and I think everyone should learn to spend it because once we are start spending it, it's a well move. It's uh, you can't just hold. <laughs> well, I think you look back to to last so long the pieces. Um, that was really a, an inflection point for Bitcoin, and you know we still celebrate that day every once a week a day. And the amount of lines that those two pieces are worth now, uh, but at the time, you know, it's like twenty five dollars. Uh, now it's oh yeah, I still. Uh... This may be that I have not that imagination that the money I'm spending now will be one day like the Bitcoin pizza. And uh, I mean Bitcoin I'm spending now, but I'm currently earning Bitcoin for uh, for the Citadel 21, and uh, I'm spending a lot of time on it. So it's like I'm not working on other uh, jobs for fiat. So I just uh, they send me Bitcoin, and I have to go and change it for fiat to pay a rent. So. Even I'm still not hodling about spending, but it's the Bitcoin, uh, it's what about it is. If you should spend it, it's money, it's not uh, gold. I mean, some people would say me that it is gold, but <laughs> I understand it as, as a money. It's like a really, really valuable, spendable gold. <laughs> yeah, some people wouldn't agree on it, but uh, yeah, I, I think so. So for listeners that want to do the work directly, what are the covers you've worked on? About the issues I did already. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's actually coming from the internet version of Citadel 21. So I'm uh, copying all the text from the internet and I'm copying all the all the pictures, and then I'm uh, doing it in very different uh, graphic design than it's on web. I'm doing it all manually. I'm uh, printing all the text and cutting them with the scissors and then glue them into the layout and scan them back to the computer. So when you open Citadel, you have like absolutely analog, how to say, mirrored uh, version of the of the digital one. But uh, as I'm using all those uh, low-res images from the internet, it's all visible. You can see all the pixels and uh, all the low resolution images together with this, uh, like the collage style. And I think it's fresh. It's. Uh, I like to bring the feeling when the people will open it in because I guess because all of these prints are numbered and uh, kind of limited. I hope people will keep it and when they open it in 10 years uh, they will recognize that it was made in like prehistoric time of Bitcoin and I'm trying to bring them this prehistoric feeling from now to that uh, that moment so they know it, it's the history. And it's, it's good that you know, it's not just a, a digital PDF, right? It's interesting taking a different design, especially since it's on the thousand yeah, it's, a, it's 1,000 copies. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to keep it uh, as far as possible from the from the digital feeling, because all those people are can somehow uh, they spend a lot of time in digital. But uh, I like if they have the magazine in their hands, it's something like completely different. Yeah, I think what it helps to do is really get people to understand. Here's something physical that they can they can open, they can look through, they can understand like. Bitcoin, in a way, is created as well. Yeah, it's all the cultural movement. I guess Bitcoin is uh, much more than just the money. For me, it's much more like philosophy and uh, and the idea for a better uh, society, which is connected to the money. It's funny on it because I call it last underground, but should be last underground connected to the money? I uh, no, <laughs> but 
uh, I compare it with the dance scene in 90s or, or skateboarding scene in, uh, in the 90s where I went through and uh, I remember how it was before it went uh, like commercial. And it somehow reminds me the Bitcoin scene because we are meeting on the congresses and everyone knows everyone and uh, it's still small when you compare it to the whole planet. So I contributed to the, the third edition of the Central Park Okay, I didn't start. I have uh, to copy the text today. So I, I'm also I'm reading the text when I'm doing the graphics. So I will read your, your text. I'm curious to see what, what ideas come from. And you haven't seen any printed version yet? No, yeah, just the pictures that people have that have posted online. Yeah, you will get your copy because you contribute. It would be interesting to talk a little bit about the cypherpunk. Well, maybe rather not, because uh, I'm not truly uh, like cypherpunk in the meaning of the using of the technologies. I'm using uh, Signal, and yes, I'm careful. On other side, I'm kind of doxing myself because I'm artist and it's uh, difficult for me to be like invisible. Some people want to talk to me in front of camera, and I would say I would be, I could be much more cypherpunk. <laughs> but uh, again, I understand the history and the and the meaning of cypherpunk, and I can visualize it, and that's my uh, part. Well, they, they will understand it completely different than us. They, uh, they will grow with it and uh, it will be absolutely like part of their, their everyday life. It's uh, changing very fast even now with the, all this communication through the digital uh, media because of COVID. It's changing. People know they uh, should be more careful in, uh, in the virtual space and uh, I think it's changing. Yeah, exactly. That's true. I actually escaped from Facebook and I hate it simply. And uh, it takes me some time. It was not easy to uh, to, to skip all my uh, contacts <laughs> because uh, then I went to Twitter, which I uh, know it's not better, but uh, I really enjoy it. It's like uh, crypto Twitter. It's uh, quite interesting uh, space. <laughs> yeah, it's helped me also to promote my name and my artwork. But it's not really uh, cypherpunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting in the, like all the information economy, and it'll be interesting to see over the next like, five, ten years and how social changes as a whole. Yeah, that's uh, just a big question mark. You know what? It's who companies who are uh, running it now, they are not disappearing. So I think we, we will stay. We are already 15 years on Facebook and Twitter and uh, nothing gonna change soon. But yeah, people will start to be more careful. I mean, we are actually, we were looking for another social media with parallel police because also we have the limits with Facebook. But uh, in Czech Republic, the Facebook is uh, only platform. Here is no, not so many people using Twitter. And it's impossible to switch for Mammoth or for other media because uh, no one cares. Everyone is on Facebook, so you have to go back to Facebook and uh, promote it there. And it's like, yeah, actually, I'm quite happy that I escape and I'm in communication with people from all around the world through the Twitter, but uh, uh, not people from Czech and <laughs> I quite like it. Yeah, but people are uh, lazy, and uh, as I say, it was even for me. I I know that uh, I like to escape Facebook, I, but it took me one year when I really decide I'm not going there anymore. And even now, I still didn't delete my uh, account because there are moments when I need to go there because. Whatever. A few times it's happened to me. And so those people are going to stay on those platforms because uh, it has to come something really exciting for them to change uh, their own history. Like they have many years in it and they don't like to <laughs> change it. I would suggest to anyone on Facebook to just uh, delete it. But <laughs> yeah. 
Definitely, it's the digital version. Some people are like putting much more effort in their digital version than their true life. <laughs> That's true. I think there's enough awareness now, but there is an element of, of harm putting all of your data out there. I think people are definitely thinking about what to build next, and it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens. So let's talk about my art. Yeah. Okay. Well, every poster has some like history, but uh, as we are doing just like a spoken podcast, it's difficult for me to talk about the visuals. I mean, uh, it has no sense, or does it? Okay. So okay, I can talk about the Citadel Twenty One. That's actually cover for second issue of this magazine, which I did a Babel uh, Tower where the core Bitcoiners are going up, uh, where the Bitcoin is uh, inviting them. It's actually a citadel, but uh, it's kind of uh, like the dream I had, where all the Bitcoiners are in the citadel. And there is, uh, like every Bitcoiner takes the part in the citadel, because uh, I don't like to make it really uh, like the building where no one can enter, and I'm living there just by alone in some castle. And uh, so I think it's actually society, this citadel. And uh, yeah, I, I draw there like uh, 20 silhouettes of the people who are been watching for like, uh, let's say one or two years on Twitter. And they somehow make some impact on me. And then later when I did this uh, citadel, I found uh, them so important in the Bitcoin society and in influence myself for me, that uh, I draw them in. And every of the person has some occupation which is significant for, uh, like, uh, there is the the hackers, there is the miners, there is the developers, uh, influencers, so hodlers. Uh, I draw in myself like an artist, there are some journalists, the musicians. This is the meaning of this, uh, of this visual. And so I printed like uh, 21. Uh, copies of this and I send to every person which is on uh, visual one copy and uh, one copy remind me which is uh, the whale and I offer this uh, copy for 6.5 uh, <laughs> Bitcoin but uh, yeah it's kind of a joke and uh, I don't uh, believe uh, anyone will buy it but yeah that's the work of the memes and uh, what's uh, around us. Yeah, and next to it, this is the like celebration of the Bitcoin pizza purchased, and I slightly change it to that uh, every satoshi spent on art is a milestone for Bitcoin history because uh, as and as Laszlo make this uh, historical payment, uh, I think anyone who put his Bitcoin in art makes kind of an experience because. Uh, it can be priceless in a few years, but also no one knows. <laughs> so just to clarify for listeners, it sounds like the 21st copy of Citadel 21 Volume 2 uh, is still available for purchase. For yeah, definitely. It's still available. <laughs> Some of the Bitcoin whales that are listening to this podcast, I just might want to take your opportunity to reach out uh, to set the now. I can talk more about the artworks. The artwork I sold, the only, like, I did this 40 copies, and only this Bitcoin white paper is, is sold out now. I mean, I have last, like, four copies, which I keep for conferences, but uh, I'm not uh, entering any this year. So, yeah, this is the artwork, like, most successful artwork, but it's clear because I somehow get to the point there with the dinosaurs and the bunkers and the... And the pixelized uh, Bitcoin uh, meteorite, which is hitting the planet of dinosaurs and the river of money. This is everything in it, but I try to visualize something completely different. I think I was thinking about the rabbit hole, Bitcoin rabbit hole, but uh, I get to this when I was drawing it and it was quite uh, quick. Uh, done. I mean, on some artworks I spent weeks, and this one I spent like a few days, and it was on point, and it's all sold. So, yeah, sometimes uh, I'm getting very fast to the point. Sometimes it's uh, it's much more about some my art art feeling, and uh, people just uh, don't take it. <laughs> I imagine it's interesting to look at what see how people react. How, how's that experience? 
Yeah, I would say I, in this moment, because I did those prints, I did many prints before I went to the public with it. So in Baltic Honey Badger, I came with like 10 posters there. So uh, I think everyone can find the print he likes. So yeah, some people were terrified with the Bitcoin Baphomet. They were like, uh, why are you scaring people with uh, this? Uh, and why you even put the connection between Baphomet and Bitcoin together? But I was visualizing the spectre, which is hunting modern world, which is coming again from the Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. It's the first sentence of, of the manifesto from TC May. And I tried to visualize this uh, spectre, which is hunting the modern world. And somehow I had the feeling that I have to go like this metal uh, visualization, like uh, something really hardcore. <laughs> and uh, so I chose this uh, Eliaf Louis Baphomet, uh, which is some like icon for Satan <laughs> and I give him Bitcoin in one hand and the blockchain in other hand so some people just simply hate it some people really likes it uh, depends yeah some people are uh, but mostly people like this uh, prints and they can find the connection between what they are living and what I'm visualizing well, some of the best art is art that's challenging sometimes you know keeping everything light and isn't the way to go? It doesn't describe the roughness of yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing positive and nice visuals. I'm not going dark very very often. This one is special, but uh, on other ones I'm trying to uh, still express my feelings in some kind of positive way because still uh, it should be hanged uh, at your home. So uh, I prefer some like positive vibration. You have a and this is actually really one of the first posters I did and you see the Bitcoin logo is even turned in a wrong angle because it was before there was Bitcoin cash and uh, it was only Bitcoin so it doesn't matter how it was turned in that time I wouldn't turn it to the like left side in this uh, uh, nowadays. I love all the story of the Satoshi Nakamoto and uh, this is so great that uh, uh, giving really deepness to the to the older history. It's a thousand times better than if we know the creator of uh, of Bitcoin. So this is like the gut brings in, bringing uh, this Bitcoin. And also that was uh, designed in the time when Craig Wright coming uh, strongly with, with his uh, claiming that he is Satoshi Nakamoto. So I was like, okay, anyone can say I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> Interesting that the creator of Bitcoin essentially disappeared, and that was one of the best things that he or she or they could have done. Bitcoin is different. It's not a CEO, or it's not a founder. A CEO, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is uh, this is the point. That's the part of the history which is mysterious. And when it's something mysterious, you have teams to visualize. Um, so people are looking to find you and find your artwork and purchase your artwork. What are the best channels? Twitter and Cypherpunk Now or my website uh, cypherpunknow.com. This is where I have all NFTs and prints and history. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you very much, Alex.